All right, everybody. So I'm going to be really honest and tell you, I wasn't entirely sure whether I was going to even make this episode and show you kind of this terrible experience I uh, recently had. But it's been a few months. I've had some time to calm down and kind of give myself some retrospective. And I've definitely learned a few things. So I figured that, hey, even my mistakes uh, may be beneficial to you. I also wanted to tell you some about my customer service experience later on. Uh, first off, though, let's talk about the uh, box right here. It is a FedEx box, FedEx delivery. And look, this was a return to me. So um, you may remember a couple months ago I did a uh, restoration of a Sony 1943 MD. And I'm not going to tag to all the videos here, but I will tag to this one in the comments. I mean, the description. This is uh, me actually packing this exact PVM the first, you know, 10 minutes or me packing it and, and showing how I packed it. And I've gone back and look at back and see. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about basically the return from here. But this one did get sold on eBay and it was packed and ultimately shipped up to Seattle, Washington, to the Seattle, Washington area. And so this is what it looked like when I dropped it off to FedEx. The FedEx uh, FedEx store actually inspected it and everything. And this was cool. I mean, this was like the fourth one I'd actually shipped over the last little bit. So um, anyway, if you want to go check that out to see too. But this was, uh, this was kind of an unexpected, but a little bit maybe expected kind of outcome. But this is what it literally looked like after it was shipped to Seattle and then it was damaged some in transit to Seattle and then the Seattle uh, FedEx came and picked it up from the receiver's address and uh, didn't take all the packaging back, threw it back in this box halfway and brought it all the way back here to me in Tennessee. So, um, First off, I will, well, first off, I will open the box and I'll show you uh, what it looks like. So again, if you want to go back or if you've already seen that video of me packing this, uh, you can look at that and you, you can see how it was sent back to me. Now, it was kind of a complete mess as far as it went with this claim because uh, this one ultimately sold on eBay. It was not too expensive, honestly. Thankfully, maybe for me, I was lucky on this one that it was uh, only sold for like $380, which is really low for um, a 20-inch monitor. However, it was really old. It did have some scratches on the screen. I did recap all the boards and everything in it, um, but it, it thankfully actually didn't sell for a whole lot because I had to refund the money here and um, try to file a claim with FedEx, and we'll talk about that more at the end as we go through uh, unpacking here first. You just notice that the PVM is pretty much just thrown in here in this box. This is the box that I shipped it in, but it's pretty worn out. Um, I lifted the whole monitor out here, but there's very little of the packing material left. Probably uh, one-fourth to one-third of what I originally wrapped it in. So uh, that's how much packaging was taken back by the driver. Uh, I was not expecting... Uh, the driver to not take all the packaging back. But unfortunately, the guy who bought it from me, he was very nice and very helpful. But FedEx was very difficult to deal with here where they did not, um, they weren't the greatest to communicate with. Of course, we did have the whole um, pandemic going on. So uh, that's just kind of made it a little bit worse. It was really at the beginning of that. And uh, so here's what we got. I mean, I'm just going to go through here. And the reason I'm even opening this is because it's been a while and I want to salvage some of these parts if at all possible. But uh, the big spoiler, look at this plastic right here. Um, we're going to take a quick look here at this. This unbelievable. This, all this broken plastic, this is the entire bezel for the 1943 MD. It was just completely shattered in the bottom of this box. As, uh, there was also a lot of plastic from the back plastic plate on there. So there's a lot of just uh, broken plastic piles of it in here. So I did uh, look through it and make sure 
to not miss anything that was important. There were a couple little plug-in boards that were in here. Um, I wanted to get any kind of screws or really rivets. Those little plastic rivets are hard to come by. And so I definitely found, I think, five or six of those, almost all of them, on the rivets. But the uh, it's just unbelievable how bad this was banged around. And here we have the actual monitor itself and oh, it was just a disaster you can tell here um you know thankfully i was expecting it to look awful but they actually shoved just like pieces of foam inside here uh everything was just smashed to bits the neck board i could already tell had been collapsed in and just crushed it was broken into like 20 pieces here it was held together from the other components but just really a wreck and then the other circuit boards didn't look much better and the tube even had a lot of damage to the back of it right here so uh, it was not a pretty sight inside there and honestly I'm going to tell you at the end what I ended up doing with the parts here and what I was able to salvage but I could already tell there wasn't much if you just look at the flyback here uh, very good flyback still and hopefully, um, you know, thankfully this was kind of salvageable, but it was actually on a circuit board. Now it's just free floating and just an utter mess. So um, you're always taking this risk when you ship, especially a 20 inch monitor across the country like I did. Here's the boards. Look at the circuit boards. I finally got them all out and broken down and they are broken. Now look where my finger is. If you look in real close here, I'll try to get pause it. This dimple where my cursor is that dimple is um a part of the circuit board that's just cracked in and there's there's multiple places on the circuit board that are like that where it's just been crushed and um potentiometers were ripped off down here so the boards are wrecks they're pretty much unusable but since i did recap these boards and they were never really used I'm going to take all the capacitors out of them because there's a lot of, I mean, it's like $80 worth of good capacitors that I replaced not too long ago. Um, I'm going to keep those, so I'll pull those capacitors out of all these boards. And um, none of the boards looked really good, none of them. Uh, the power board may have been okay, but to be honest, I wasn't entirely sure. So the, uh, sorry, some crazy bugs flying around in the shop tonight and uh super warm weather out here in tennessee you never know what's gonna crawl, crawl out of the ground down here but anyway the tube was shot the um i got it all broken down the circuit boards you know were trashed except for a couple boards we're gonna go through some parts here that i was able to salvage uh but just a, a big wreck so here's some parts to take a look at this is the flyback assembly and I definitely saved it because it did not crack. It looked to be good shape. And it had a clean break right at the circuit board. So it could, should be easy to desolder that. But that's kind of a rare part. And uh, so it's definitely something I want to hold on to. And it's still in good shape. I was able to save, save the front button board. It might not ever come in handy, but you never know. Uh, so I did save it. And then I was able to save the yoke because the yokes are um, almost indestructible, this position they're in, it rarely gets damaged. So this one was in pretty good shape, so I'll keep that. And of course, uh, there was the back input board with uh, the inputs, and it's a stacked board, but it really didn't take any damage too. So I kept it. There's a nice power cord that comes with this one, so that was definitely salvageable. Even if you're just taking these and salvaging it at like a salvage yard for uh, scrap metal, this is very high quality components that will get you, you know, 20 bucks in salvage parts for sure at the scrap yard, to be honest. A lot of copper in here. So here's some other stuff I was able to save. We'll get a closer look here in a second. Uh, I was able to save some stuff from the tube, like the spacers behind the yoke and the tube. Uh, a lot of hardware. Uh, the good stuff is hard to get. You know, you want to keep a lot of that good Sony hardware if you can get it. Also got some purity magnets off the back of the tube. A lot of those rivets. Of course, I kept the Sony emblem, which made it 
back, thankfully. And um, just some more screws. And then I did get the convergence strips off there, too. So uh, I'll clean all that stuff up and uh, we'll get it, you know, I'll recycle it in other restorations where I can use it. Again, these rivets are very difficult to find. I've never even find, found a really good replacement, so I'm glad to get at least those out of it. And it just shows that even when something's a pile of junk, you can get something out of it if you're, you know, working on these kind of things regularly. Uh, but that and then the tube spacers, you know, those are, um, it's always nice to get extra things like that too because you can't really buy that kind of stuff anymore. I also did pull out all the cabling. This is the Degas cable and the rest of the cabling that went between the printed circuit boards. And um, there's the circuit boards. And again, uh, just going to take the capacitors out of those. And thankfully, I already had a job lined up. Uh, but here's a close look at these circuit boards again. But I already had somebody else send me their chassis and everything to recap. So I was able to repurpose all those parts and um, recap this gentleman's entire monitor and... So, thankfully, it wasn't a complete loss. I was able to get as much as physically possible out of it, considering I was able to get my capacitors that I had used in the last job out of it, too, and use it in this recap job here, um, which I completed, oh, you know, within a day. So, it was a good, um, it was a good learning experience to salvage, you know, something that was just complete garbage rather than just you know accepting that it was gone. Now, I did want to talk to you a little bit about my customer service experience. And uh, unfortunately, this one, again, was shipped with FedEx, but they did just, um, I don't really want to get into it over the top. And, you know, it's been months now. I've already accepted the fact that they have uh, decided to just completely deny any claim here, and it's fine. Uh, but they just really handled it such in such a poor manner that I close my account with them and I'm not shipping with them anytime in the foreseeable future. You know, even before this particular uh, transaction happened, that was this bad one. I had a couple other shipments go kind of dodgy and they were doing some weird stuff with the tracking. It was packages were showing up as delivered and they weren't actually delivered until a day later, which was kind of weird. And when you're dealing with expensive items, you don't, don't really want to mess with that. And if you do ship them, you want to make sure you get good customer service. So uh, this is just a screenshot of how many times I had to call them. This was after I filed a claim through FedEx.com. This is the FedEx customer service number. You can see here how many calls I made. Uh, that's starting all the way back on April 3rd just to check in uh, after I had initially filed the claim. And uh, many of these days where I'd call and then call right back on this, like, days where I'd call three times, four times, five this day, they kept hanging up on me. Um, they would hang up on me again and again, and then I'd ask to talk to somebody in a customer service or somebody that was a superior, and they'd send me to, I I'm not even kidding, they sent me to a call center overseas, and the guy did, you know, he didn't speak very well English, and uh, he basically said that he wasn't above the guy who had, traf you know, transferred me to him. And then so that was really like the last call. I remained on the line. And um, what ultimately happened there was that was on May 15th. You can tell that call was almost 30 minutes long. I had to wait on hold twice for 20 minutes of that. And the other time was me talking to two people um, and then I finally got to a third supervisor because they made me speak to three supervisors just to uh, politely request to cancel my account with them because I didn't want to deal with them anymore so it was a big hassle just to even cancel my account you couldn't do it online you couldn't do it uh, you know just by calling or going to the store and then when I actually had a problem we had to try to talk to some of the stores locally because uh, they were involved in the transactions and they approved the packing and they pretty much just you know hung us out to dry they didn't really help us at all and so the whole thing was just about a poor customer service experience and i can't use them anymore unfortunately i can't trust them to tra tra uh to transport my high-end monitors and uh you know have them show up looking like this and i and you know they they this is of course looks a lot worse as it came all the way back and again, I do agree that um, I probably could have done better on the packing, but 
the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is that uh, if you're a large, large, large company like FedEx and you, you know, talk about customer service as being a focal point and you have the staff and you make, you know, a multi-global national company that's making lots of money and um, almost has a monopoly, not a complete monopoly, but, but there's not very many options to, to ship. So um, when you like that and then you actually have a trouble and you get more of a runaround and it wasn't, uh, I mean, basically um, I submitted the claim online. They immediately denied it and they, uh, then I had to call and ask them why. And they said they didn't get enough pictures, even though I had sent them the video and I'd sent them probably 12 pictures of the packing. They said they didn't get enough pictures, so I resent them three or four times. And they still, you know, I'd call and try to follow up. And they would transfer me or they would hang up on me. And then they would, I would call to try to follow up on the photos. So, you know, uh, I could tell, you know, I could go deeper into how the whole thing went. It just went down that uh, spiral where they would just deny it. And they said they would reopen an appeal after they initially denied it, they just said, you know, uh, well, we just initially deny them. We initially denied this one, and now you have to open an appeal. And then they never answered the appeal. The last notice I got said they were still looking at the appeal um, as late as June 1st, and then they never followed up with me again. And I've pretty much, uh, you know, salvaged what I could out of it, uh, learned what I could out of it, and changed what I can do out of it. And now, hopefully, after this long video, you can understand how difficult it still is to ship these properly. And, um, you know, for the time being, I'd kind of just put all the responsibility on FedEx or UPS or whatever shipper you have to use. Um, you can either you'll either have to overpack it to where I'm talking, like uh, strap it to a pallet after you packed it in a box. You'll have to do that kind of a drop shipment. Or you'll have to take it to FedEx or to UPS and tell them they have to pack it and then insure it for, you know, two or three times the value. Insure it for $3,000 if you're shipping a 20-inch monitor. That way they'll make sure and pack it to know that they're, you know, on the hook for a lot of money in a big case if something does happen. Because right now, I mean, if you don't, uh, you, you uh, this was a lot of money I put into packing and time. And it ultimately didn't even work out. So anyway, um, let me know what you think. If you've had any bad experiences, feel free to share them below. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can all learn from this and do better next time. I know I will. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time with some more retro content.